Now this evening we've got something great in store for you. We've got two great women of God, both with fantastic careers. And one is Dr. Derin Balogun, and she and her husband, Pastor Nii Balogun, run KICC Chelmsford. And then we have in the second segment, um, one of our keynote speakers for the Winning Women Conference, um, Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika. So don't go away and please share, share, share. So I'm seeing all of you. So press the share button. So down you will see a little arrow. If you click on that arrow, it will allow you to share. So please share this live stream with your friends and family so they can listen to these two great women because you really are going to be blessed. So without much ado, we are going to invite Dr. Darren, are you in the room? Come on down. We yes, I am. Hello, hello, good hello. evening, everyone. How are you? I'm very well. Oh, thank well, you. Well, well, How are you? What comes to your mind? I'll give you two um, things that you just tell me what comes to your mind. Morning person, night person? Morning person. Oh, okay. Have you always been a morning person? Uh, more so since I'm a mother. <laughs> so okay, even right, when right. I want to lie in, I've got so people you, to look up to. So. so you didn't really have a choice in that. Okay. <laughs> uh, cash or card? Card. Always card. No cash? Just easy. <laughs> no cash. Um, yeah, there might be extra cash, you know, just, just in case, but more of a card person. Okay okay right okay interested I, i'm a card person as well and so when you're going shopping do you have a trolley coin how do you what do you do then do you never have coins i i, I don't really like trolley co trolleys <laughs> that i have to use a coin in fact if i if i could choose between two places to shop if one has trolleys where um you don't have to use a coin i will go for that instead of the one where you have to use a coin uh -huh. <laughs> right okay dress up or down I think a middle, yeah. So it's so a sort of middle, as as the occasion deserves. So right. So you will rise to the occasion as yeah. the occasion fits. Mm -hmm. Right now, viewers, if you have any questions, don't forget to leave your questions in the chat box. Now um, we have Dr. Darian with us, and she is an alumna of Cambridge at Cambridge University. So we have a very great mind with us. So. I'd like you to tell us, Dr. Derrin, because we know you have a doctorate degree in genetics. What inspired you to specialise in heart disease? Um, the, the inspiration has always been um, I want to do something for humanity. I want to study a subject where I could affect humanity. So that was it. When I left Nigeria to move to the United Kingdom for university, the idea was that I was going to find the cure for malaria. <laughs> So that was the, the driving point at, yeah. that, at that stage. Yeah. Um, but then um, being in Cambridge, I was in a lab where my supervisor was one of the top, if you mention five people in heart research in the world, he was one of those. And so I kind of just got into that. And because the, the whole aim was to help humanity, then yes, um, the genetic base of heart disease became something that uh, I was very passionate about. All right, excellent. And I understand that the um, Winning Women Convention, we will then will be a health segment, will there? Yes, there will be a health segment. Um, so one of the workshops that is being put forward is a, a health and well-being talk and, and, and workshops, very interactive. And so very excited about the Winning Women Convention program for this year. Um, and then also there'll be health checks. And um, this is very, very dear to Pastor Yemi Siashima Lewis Hart, who is our global president. Um, so, yes, we'll be conducting health checks um, from, you know, blood pressure checks, diabetes, glucose monitoring, uh, a whole gamut of, you know, just, just raft of um, things that we need to do to make sure that we know our numbers, i.e., you know, uh, high, whether we, we have high blood pressure or not, because it's important that we know. If we know the information, then we can we can do something about it. Well, I, I can testify that I um, had my vitals taken at, at one of these conventions a few years ago, and it came, it um, revealed that I had to keep an eye on something mm. that I had no idea of. Mm. And, you know, this um, year's theme is about thriving, but you can't really thrive in your life, mm. in your business, in your career, if you don't have good health. So that sounds like really good. But talking about thrive, tell us what thrive means to you. Um, so thrive. 
thrive, um, according to the dictionary, thrive is um, growing vigorously. That's one of the one of the meanings of thrive. Is I love the fact that he says vigorously. <laughs> um, and I think that leads you to um, it, it's it's doing well it's been successful it's prospering um it's burgeoning those are those are the synonyms to thrive but actually the the pivotal one is when you're thriving in the face of difficulty and challenges and if you think about it lavender we all love the smell of lavender is very beautiful but it's actually one of the the, the biggest shrubs that thrive even in a drought so wow. lavender will thrive in a in a drought and I think for me that's that's the great thing about thriving so it's not just being successful it is all of those things but actually it is uh, winning against the odds I think that that's the part of thrive that I'm hoping to just hold on to and learn from all the great speakers that are going to be at the winning women convention 2023 and there are going to be been very many great speakers and thank you for that insight into thrive because past the embassy does have a knack really for picking <laughs> these very prophetic themes you know and, and so i'm really looking forward to exploring that further and please join us all of those um guests that i can see waving and leaving messages so it's just around the corner 19 days to go dr Derring. so tell us yeah. what you're most looking forward to at this um, year's convention um most looking forward to um, networking with the women okay. I think sometimes we go to church and we go home <laughs> um, which of course is what we do but actually being able to network to 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 be in that place of sisterhood uh, with the women and to learn um, from you know the challenges because we, we learn from the challenges we learn from the challenges we share our wins we laugh together we okay. we, we ponder on things together I'm looking forward to the coin on here the fellowship I think that's the biggest thing for me so when I pack my suitcase I'm going to get it out of the garage soon in a few days start to pack because I, I go off and I stay with one of my sisters right, who lives right. in the Kent area that's, that's so for me winning women is that time when I go away and my husband had sorts out the kids and, and and I can just go and fellowship and just bask in God's presence. So okay. yes, encourage everyone, please come, 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 get ready, get ready, get ready. Yes. It is going to be a great time. Thank you very much, Dr. Derren. That is a very valid point because mm. no matter where you live, mm. Um, please click on the link and find out how you can get free transport and local hotels. So do come and network and fellowship and learn how to thrive. Now, Dr. Derrin unfortunately has to leave us. You've been <laughs> such a blessing, but uh, we're going to see you at the convention. So please come and visit her there. Oh. So let us show our appreciation. Thank you very much, Dr. Derrin. You. you take care. Our regards to Pastor Nee and I'll see you on the 23rd. Take yes. care. Well, you. <laughs> so we are going to move very quickly to the next segment because we have a very special guest and are you ready and this is one of our keynote speakers who will shortly be coming into the guest room and then she's here hello mrs dr Ibukun Awoshika, you are most welcome we're really really excited to see you we hope you're excited to be with us thank you very much i am I apologize for my voice, but it's very rich tonight, so just enjoy. Well, we're just, well, just happy to have you here with us. And what part of the world are you connecting with us from this evening? I'm actually in the U I came into the UK today just for the night. Right, so it's the same time zone, so you are most welcome. Okay, well, we have, if you've just switched on, we have um, Dr. Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika live here into your living rooms. So please take this opportunity to post questions in the bubble box that you'd like to put to her. Um, Mrs. Ibrakun is going to be a keynote speaker, a business and career workshop that will be taking place at the Winning Women Convention. So just click on the link here and you will find out so much more about this great woman of God. But I just want to read quickly Ecclesiastes 9.10. A reads, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. And this is a passage that epitomizes um, Dr. Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika um, as an entrepreneur, author, international leader. Um, but please click on the um, link and find out about all the great things. So thank you for joining us. We really 
would like to put some questions to you because we want the viewers to get to know more about the woman who has all of these international accolades. So I'm going to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. So we see you, know you and respect you as a renowned world global leader. If, however, you have to work in a team, what role would you prefer to play? Well, I work in teams all the time. I think my entire life has been um, of working as part of a team. And then if you come from a family of seven, you're part of a team, whether you like it or not. So you, you have to uh, be used to working with people in order to achieve the results that you seek. So um, I don't know in terms of identifying a role, I just know that I like to make my team work. Excellent. Which means for me, it's about bringing everybody together that is part of my team and maximizing the talent of everyone. So it's like, if you ask me, I would be like a conductor. If you have an orchestra and you're sort of uh, trying to take all the best talents and the gifts of every member, yeah. of the orchestra to create the beautiful music that you do so that that's but you know that's what you call leadership in a sense in real world mm. in real terms and um but i also realize if anybody calls you a leader if you have wisdom and understanding you better understand that it means that you're a servant because if you don't serve everybody else in your team you can't not get the best result for your team. So it's about having the grace and the courage to celebrate the gifts and the talents of everybody around you in order to achieve your set goal. Amazing. The servant leader. Yes. Yes. That summarizes. Excellent. Yeah. Well, you're, you're receiving lots of love on the chat. Everybody is saying some Everyone. great, Thank wonderful um, things about you. Yes, you. we do have the wonderful Mrs. Ibukun Awoshika with us. And please send your questions. There'll be an opportunity for us to put your questions to her shortly. But we're back to these five quick questions. What colour best describes your personality? Oh, yellow. Everybody that knows me. Really? Knows my color is yellow okay uh, and uh, that's because i love the sunshine right i like you know i love a lot of light i like large open space i love things nice and bright i like homely and love and fun and togetherness and uh yeah yellow does excellent and if you need to take a break and have some water um, please do so. We are, this is a very informal setting. I've got my tea here, my winning winning cup. So please don't hesitate if you want to take a sip. So talking about how you work, we know that you work incredibly hard and always have done from a very young age. Which is your preferred way of working? Office, remotely, or a bit of both? My best was, or my best way of working is life with us. So I'm not, uh, I have to do virtual because of the times and the seasons. And sometimes I just can't be in multiple places at the same time. However, I love being sitting in the midst of people. Mm -hmm. So if I really have serious work to do, I would sit and my team would sit all around me and we could sit for hours on end and do that. And I would get a lot more done. Just thinking together, working together, picking up on thoughts, picking up on ideas, you know, acting on it and sort of, I love being in the midst of people. Wow. For me, it, it's, it's energetic, it's energizing and it's uh, sort of fuels my creativity. Wow. Uh, wow. Thank you for being in our midst um, this evening and for the viewers who are just joining us now um, you can see uh, Mrs Ibukun Awoshika at our winning winning convention um, that's taking place between the 23rd and the 26th of November if you have any questions please pin them in the bubble box now 
there is a bubble question box now. So, um, Mrs. Awoshika, we'd love to hear about your journey and um, whether you became who you are today. Was it a deliberate plan or was it a result of a number of unforeseen paths? Uh, when you say it, the, the thing about our life and our journey is there's a need for you to have a sense of where you want to go because it guides the decisions you make when you get to all the multiple crossroads of your life. However, there's also a need for us to have an adventurous spirit and therefore we respond to things, the opportunities, the doors that open and things we haven't even planned for. Um, along the way mm -hmm. and it's all of those things that shapes who we are so some of my actions would have been intentional were intentional as a matter of fact but so many were accidents of life mm. and it's really about how do you respond to them how do you respond to the doors that open to you or the doors that shocked against you, how do you deal with them? That's really what creates the totality of our story. I mean, I always say to people, I was probably one of the most confused young girl between secondary school and university. Now, I, I had ideas of multiple things I wanted to be. Thought I wanted to be a doctor, found out that you have to deal with real dead bodies in medical school. <laughs> I thought that was a bad idea. <laughs> Immediately abandoned that. Mm -hmm. uh, then decided, oh, uh, I'll make, um, I wanted to be an architect. And anyway, then went into university to study chemistry. Got into university by, before the end of the first year, I realized even though I could pass it, I hated it. Then thought I'll make a great lawyer because I used to debate in school and everybody thought I'll make a great lawyer. So I thought about changing to law. And then I decided, no, I didn't want that. I wanted to become a chartered accountant so I could go and work in a bank. And, and by the time I did my youth call in uh, an accounting firm, I realized how much I hated it, you know, because it just didn't challenge my mind enough mm. and stuff like that. And so I thought, okay, I would still like to work in a bank, but I don't want to be an accountant. And then to kill time, I went to work in a furniture company just to kill time whilst waiting for my bank job. I lasted there three and a half months only. And oh. after that, I realized I wanted to build a furniture company. So, and for the last 35 years, I've built a furniture manufacturing group. So that's why I said life will present many unplanned parts to you. It's really about how do you take the doors that open to you mm. How do you have the wisdom to find the will of God in the midst of the possibilities? Or even if you follow one route and it turns out not, you find out then this is not really where I want to go. How do you take your learnings from there and transition it into another place and all that? So it's about how much we're keyed into God and our ability to make the right call when we find ourselves in different situations along the path life is an adventure yes, there's so yes. much we will never know mm -hmm. until you get into the moment but there are things that must be standard in our lives our relationship with god no matter what the season is what the path is that's something that's untouchable and we must be sure of it a value system what is our truth and what is not what are we willing to die for or not? You know, how far will we go? Or where will we not go? What are the things that are non-negotiable in our lives? You know, so all of those ones are, can be transited into any situation, but they must be constant in your life. So it's, it's really important that we get a sense of those ones. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, we will figure out along the way as things things happen. I mean, there's so much of my life I could never have thought about at the beginning. 
you know, and I've crossed seasons into seasons into seasons, but I've only just followed God mm -hmm. as He led, as He led the way. So. Right, and and you've shown great resilience. So you, the adage when life throws lemons, make lemonade, and you've made lots of lemonade. <laughs> great. You know the, the thing is, if our lives were just straight and flat, you'd be so boring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all the things we call the lemons, yes, they are fireproofing moments. Mm -hmm. We tell the story of the three Hebrew children only because they went through the fire and came out on top. Yes. It, why is worth telling at all? We talk about Joseph. Why is the story of Joseph worth telling at all? That in the midst of the greatest test of his life, he stood for God, even though he didn't know what was at the end of it. Mm. So he didn't take the pleasures in Potiphar's house, and he didn't allow hatred in his heart despite what his brothers did. At the end of the day, because he was consistent with his values, yes. the only reason he didn't take the easy life of being sleeping with, Kuba, uh, with the Potiphar's wife was because of the fear of God. And even though he got sent into prison, he didn't become bitter and become separated from God. And because he didn't do that, he could still hear God which is why he could decode the king's uh, dream. So it's really, I don't know why we think that uh, troubles are, um, are problems, because they're not. The Bible says in the world we will see troubles. Yeah. And then when the Bible says your mother and a conqueror, who is a conqueror? Someone that needs to fight a battle and win. You cannot conquer without uh, a battle. Mm. You know, many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord will deliver us from them all. Mm. Every affliction mm. is working for you. Mm. So when the Bible says everything works together for our good, then we must mm. understand that in the place of our trials and our tests, character is built. We earn God's trust. And we ourselves are prepared for other places. God will not trust into an untested hand treasures mm. Mm. and all of us want to be holders of treasures for god and we hold treasures for god not just in gold and silver the offices and the places that we occupy if we occupy them in the name of the lord it's because god has an assignment there it's always about the lives of people and his purpose and his own agenda so it's it's really that we must get to a place where we don't get intimidated by the challenges mm -hmm. but how do we function in it do we allow the circumstance to drown us and we forget who we are or are we able to stand and never betray god no matter what we see because at the end of it always if god wins because we choose God in those moments, then we win. Mm. That's powerful. Thank you so much. And that uh, Joseph is one of the fav my favorite characters, and in the Bible. And as you've rightly said, if we're faithful with a little, then God will give us much. Mm. And, and that test with Potiphar's wife was very, very important. So yes, for all of the new, you've got some really wonderful messages. Um, for you here. So many people sending you love. We yeah. do have Mrs. Igukun Awoshika, but only for 30 minutes, but you can spend um, a lot of time with her at the Winning Women Convention because Mrs. Awoshika will be delivering a business and careers seminar. So please sign up and do join us if you haven't done so already. Go to wkicc.org website and you'll see lots of details. Mrs. Awoshika, your um, accomplishments are um, absolutely outstanding and amazing. And you continue to remain a role model to people across the globe. But how and when does Mrs. Awoshiga wind down and relax? Yeah, that's a big question. <laughs> I wish I could have more of it. I honestly wish. I mean, like, 
this voice of mine right now uh -huh. i'm sure is my body screaming for yeah. a chance to just chill mm -hmm. you know I've, i had a crazy schedule since uh september i think so i'm a bit run down but i do i have my i know the things i love and i know the things that i don't you know enjoy that much mm -hmm. you know and uh i try to find the moments for the things that I love. You know, a perfect day for me would be to be in my house and have the people I love around me and hang out with them, whether they're young or they're old. <laughs> that would be a good day. Excellent. A good day would be to watch uh, investigative movies or something on TV. And sometimes, like when I'm in the UK, I love to watch nonsense things, you know, just <laughs> things that don't, I don't have to use my brain. I just, like, don't laugh, but I could sit down for hours if I have nothing to do watching Saying Yes to the Dress or something. As <laughs> I, love I love that. I love that. I love that. Yeah. But, yeah. but you know, when my kids ask me, are you planning a wedding? You know, why exactly do you have like, you know, they're human stories, yes. you know. Each yeah. bride has a human story. Mm -hmm. You know, people that are self-conscious of their body, people that feel insecure, people that have gone through all sorts of stuff and all the fears and anxieties about wedding and trying to fight, uh, find the right outfit and all of that. I like human stories. Mm -hmm. You know, I love, I am fascinated by human beings Excellent. a lot. I love engaging with, so I find that programs like that just show you different sides of people, you know, and their encounters. And then I'm not, it's not an interview intellectual exercise so i get to rest my brain i just laugh and just enjoy uh, those kind of uh, moments and then uh, i have holidays that are scheduled during the year they're in my, my calendar for the year okay my summer holidays uh since i was i think about 30 31 i decided i wanted to have a life apart from my business so i started going away for six weeks in the summer so I could have time with my children. And I would tell my staff that if I'm here, I'm going to think of a solution if there's any problem. You guys think of a solution too, because no, nobody should call me, you know? And so I, I sort of freed myself uh, a long time ago and that made it easier to transition out of the business and let other people uh, take. So I, I'm not attached to anything in a way that, oh, I will die if I'm not there. I don't believe that if you build a business, and it would die because you're not there. You wasted your time or wasted your life. That's my, my belief. It's also arrogance of self mm. when we tend to think that if it's not us, it can't be nobody else. So I found practical ways to win myself of such uh, uh, thoughts. So I'm very good at delegating stuff. And That's I can give anybody that can do anything better than me the job. I don't play to my weakness. I play to my strength. I just... If you can do anything better than me, you have the job. I'm out of there. <laughs> don't, don't do it. So it's just my way of uh, keeping myself, which also makes you appreciate other people. Yeah. Because then you realize that, you know what, no matter how great you are, you're not the most important person in the world. Mm -hmm. And even for your own life, you need the other people to help you in order to achieve what you want and therefore you must have respect for every other person whether they're big or they're small people everybody has real value for you mm. and you must learn to value that and if you do your life becomes uh, a lot easier and i value relationships yes young group young friends my young daughters i, I have i have naturally i have three three sons but i have many daughters <laughs> <laughs> and they are, they are my daughters, girls who are very dear to my heart. I love them like I gave birth to them. And I would go to every extent for them as well because, you know, they show me as much love and I value that. That's so. wonderful. Thank you so much. And it's lovely to hear that the um, great Mrs. Ibukun can let her hair down and relax because balance is very important in our lives. And it's great to hear how you empower so many women, young people. And um, thank you very much for sharing that. But talking about women, because it's a women's conference, yeah. um, women of colour in this country 
um, are gradually breaking through the glass ceiling in the UK. That's very evident if you look at the cabinet, the current um, cabinet of the UK. Um, but research has shown, as I'm sure you're aware, that um, many women of colour in particular find it difficult to be their authentic selves, especially Christians. And is this something that you can relate to and what advice would you give to women in those positions? Well, I think the biggest punishment you can give yourself is to try to be anything else but yourself. Okay. Once you lose the authenticity of your person, you have removed the ease with which you can function. Then it becomes real work for you to function and in that situation you become more vulnerable so my encouragement is look if you're smart enough to get there why did you question who you are in order to stay there obviously everything about you works to get you there so find how you work in the space i'll give you an example i do not drink obviously i don't smoke and because i sit in various corporate environments especially at different levels and you have to have all the corporate cocktails or dinners and stuff like that there are many functions you go to there's only champagne wine and water mm. for so, so what should that make me and you could easily get embarrassed about the fact that, you know, you're like an oddity when they say, oh, do you want a red wine, white wine? Of course, the glasses are already set in front of you. And half the time you're saying, no, I'm sorry, I don't drink. I don't apologize for it. I don't uh, then want to impress anybody and start to drink. I'm happy to drink what I alone if they can't find me juice. Mm. Otherwise, I put everybody under pressure and say, Can you, do you have any fresh squeeze juice? If you can't, if you don't have it and you can't find it, then I'll drink the water and I'm happy and comfortable. I can go to a cocktail without drinking anything, <laughs> just have a conversation and disappear thereafter. So it's really a decision we must make for every girl who wants to go sustainably for the long term in high office. You have to find the courage to be yourself. Now, there are times that there's a need to find how who you are works in the context of where you are. But that's wisdom. That's about adjusting how you relate to people. Um, Mrs. Ibukun will be with us at the convention for a whole day. So do come along. So we're going to take your questions. I will have one last question to ask you before we take questions from um, the audience. I've read that you loved your secondary school education. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to actually um, share the fact that I went to the same secondary school as you. Ah, yeah, MG girl. <laughs> yeah, awesome. MG, That's great awesome. minds, great yes. minds <laughs> come from MG. Yeah. Um, A Methodist girls high school for those who don't understand what yes, we're talking about. Yes, in Yaba, great school. Um, yes. Produces great people, of course. Um, yes. But yes. I've read, unlike me, you took part in lots of extra Debating, you ran, you yeah. acted. I did um, everything. How much influence did those school days have on the person you are today? Oh, I think Methodist Girls High School shipped. You know, that stage of your life from about 11 until about 17, when you're, you leave secondary school to go into the university, it's really the most influential part of shaping your mind. Mm. And you find your confidence, you find your voice, you, you learn how to hold on to your sense of liberty, you know, and uh, you also find ways to express yourself in multiple ways. You try out new things, you make new friends, and... Um, you learn the seriousness of an academic process, but you also le learn the discipline and responsibility of leadership. Mm. If you're a prefect or something and all of those things. So 
I think in many ways, Methodist Girls High School prepared me for because by the time you get into university, nobody's really responsible for you. Don't forget that. This is true. You know, mm -hmm. nobody's coming to chase you to go to class. No, it's your business whether you go or not. You're just going to get fired out of school. You know, nobody's uh, punishing you for behaving one way or the other. It's really secondary school that gives you the strongest foundation. Your family at home and your secondary school. Mm -hmm. Both of those places uh, sort of define your value system to some extent. And then your commitment to the things you consider important, you begin to stay focused on owning those values and working those values. And then they also, they're your most authentic friends for life. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? My, my, my year group, we have a, a chat group that is extremely busy. I mean, if you don't go there for one day, I get there, there can be 300 hours, something chats. I'm like, okay, guys, <laughs> you know, but we're quite engaged. You love each other, you yeah, support yeah. each other, you stand together. You know, it's, um, they're lifetime relationships, yeah. you know, yeah. So, yeah. I, I love my school and uh, I'm glad I went there and I'm glad for all the people that I went to school with and I'm glad for the friends I made and the sisters, Yeah, you know, friends who became my sisters. In fact, in my year group, everybody, we call ourselves sisters. So we are sisters for life. Yes, we've got quite a few MG girls um, writing in the comments. Hello, you're welcome. Let's meet up at the Winning Winning Convention. Now, one of the questions somebody has put to us um, is they'd like to know what to expect, what you have in store for them at the Business and Career Seminar. Why don't you just wait? Yeah. When you get there, you'll find out. <laughs> I mean, basically, you would, I like to, I'm a life teacher. Let's put it this way. No matter what topic I'm dealing with or what area I'm covering, I focus on coming from the angle of real life. I don't like theories, you know, so I, I come from my life experiences, the things God has helped me to have an understanding of the things I've seen. I come from a place of proof because mm. you can't argue with what you know works, mm. you know, but also what you, what happens is you also gain the wisdom of learning how to apply because the same facts different application in different lives and scenarios. So context setting is important for people. And that's why life teaching is critical because it, you help to um, call people's attention to their different contexts and how to use the same tools, you know, to, to, to bring. So, and I'm a very open teacher. I like to engage with people. So we will have which I have two sessions, I believe, one day and the other and the next day or something. Yes. I yeah. So I like extensive Q and A sessions. Right. And why do I do that? I always consider the experiences of my life like a well that is full of water. And when you rather than preach at people, which we do all the time in church, if you come from where they are you get to help them better. They can walk away and apply the next morning because you're dealing with what is real for them rather than what you think they need to learn. Excellent. Okay. So I, I, I always feel I'm able to give a lot more when sometimes I get to a place and I say, I'm not saying anything. Okay, first question. And I would take questions for hours on end. Wow. But what then happens is I get to cover so many topics and so many issues, but they're real issues of real people. And when one person asks a question, it's probably the question of 50 other people in yes. the room. And you get a chance to help them in real terms. Because I, I just realized we preach in church, people listen to sermon upon sermon, but except the they can bring it into their real life and work it to get a solution. We lose them in terms of the value of the effort put into the knowledge that's shared. So I like to engage people real time. Wow, 
and we will be engaging with the beautiful, wonderful Mrs. Ibukuma Woshika um, on Saturday and another day. So do turn up for all of the days and you will hear her and be blessed because um, she's got a lot to present and to give to us. So we're going to release you because you have done so well with your voice. Um, lots of questions, but we are telling them to come to the convention and we will have the questions answered. So thank you so much. It really has been an honour um, for you, for me and for all of our guests here. And we really look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks time. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you. you. Can we show our appreciation? Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Show our appreciation. So thank you so much for joining us. That was, yes, absolutely magnificent. How did you find that? Now, we do look forward to seeing all of you in person. Um, come to the convention. You have the date, the 23rd to the 26th. And um, sign up and register if you haven't. How do you register? There's a pinned link. Go to kicc.org website or the winning-womenweb.org website.org.uk and all of the instructions are there for you. There's free transport, um, there are hotels, everything you need to do. We have a great lineup of speakers. So in addition to Mrs. Awoshika, we have Dr. Michelle McKinney-Hammond, Pastor Christy Bature Ogbenifun, Apostle Francine Norman, and of course, our beautiful host, Pastor Yemisi Ashimalo. So, and there will be dedicated workshops, not just on business and careers, but on health and relationships as well. So click on to the link, go to the website, get your t-shirt, find out about transport, and come and have a great refreshing time and learn how to thrive. You've been fantastic this evening. It's been great spending the evening to you with you, but we want to see you. So sign up and register. We'll see you there. Good night and thank you very much. <laughs>